If you've been using Skype, Zoom, or any other video conferencing app lately, you're pretty aware that not every webcam you use is the same, and not every video experience that you're on is identical. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're looking at all the different ways that you can host or be a part of a video conference. So we're gonna be looking at the video capabilities of mobile phones, laptops and iPads, and if it's worth going out and getting a dedicated webcam and what webcams you should be looking at. So let's start with mobile phones because everybody has a mobile phone in their pocket, ready to go at any given minute when a Zoom or a Skype call comes up. So if a Zoom call comes up and you pull out your mobile phone, there's some great advantages to having your mobile on you at all times. One is the fact that you always have it on you. It is a great advantage to be able to take these calls anywhere in the world at any given moment. Two is the incredible dynamic range. You're actually presented with your mobile phone's software features. So for example, the S20 has a 40 megapixel front-facing camera that can record in 4K. The iPhone 11 Pro Max also has a front-facing camera that can record in 4K, but is only 12 megapixels. Both of them produce phenomenal front-facing video. Even the best-selling smartphone of 2019, the Samsung A10, has a five megapixel front-facing camera with 1080p quality. So even one of the most budget-friendly, best-selling phones of 2019 is able to produce amazing quality content in 2020. But there are some limitations to using a mobile phone for a Zoom call. For example, most people will hold it handheld and it will be pretty shaky. You're gonna be able to tell that you're using a mobile phone for this Zoom call. People are also naturally in tuned to hold it vertically instead of horizontally for a Zoom call. So if you're sitting in a meeting and everybody's on their laptop or using their webcam, you're gonna be orientated the absolute wrong way. And it's gonna be very clear and very evident that you're using a smartphone. Another limitation is the audio quality that you get from a smartphone. Smartphones do have a pretty decent audio quality, but they aren't able to produce the same audio quality output, especially if you're in a large environment or a large room, especially if you're outside. If you'll notice, if you've ever been on a loudspeaker phone call, you do struggle to hear people sometimes in a loud environment. So this is where headphones become a very important feature. There are a number of ways you can combat the cons of using a smartphone. And my personal suggestion would be to go out and get a very cheap tripod that can just sit on your desk when you're working and you can quickly put your iPhone or your smartphone onto this tripod and eliminate the shakiness, the verticality and every other con that comes with it. Simply plug in your headphones or connect your Bluetooth headphones as well to get the best audio quality from the device itself. Moving on to laptops, and laptops are actually a surprising category here. If we think about what most people own, most people own either a MacBook Pro or a Microsoft Surface laptop. These two devices are some of the best selling in Australia and America along with a couple other HP products and Dell products. That isn't the surprising part. What is the surprising part though, is the fact that webcams on laptops haven't really advanced in a very, very long time. So as a standard, most webcams come in at 720p and most brands don't even really tell you how many megapixels are in the front facing cameras because they're just a little cheap add on that nobody's really gonna use. So as convenient, and as, I guess, good as you might think a laptop's webcam is, in reality, the quality of the webcam is significantly worse than if you were using your smartphone. However, there are some additional benefits to using a laptop over your smartphone, and that's the simple fact that you have a much larger screen size. The screen size allows you to talk to multiple people at once and have multiple little icons of each individual person on there, without you having to squint on the smartphone to actually see who is who. Laptops also have much bigger speakers inside them, which produce much better sound quality. So if you're in a larger environment or a very echo environment, you are gonna get much better quality sound from a laptop. However, because laptops aren't really designed as photography utensils, they don't have the software smartphones do. 
So you're not gonna get the great dynamic range in a laptop's camera that you will in a smartphone. And if you don't know what dynamic range is, basically dynamic range is the ability to showcase shadows and highlights at the same time. So if you're standing inside, you're gonna be able to see inside and outside very clearly, or not at all, and the outside will be absolutely blown out, or you will be very dark. So having good dynamic range in your webcam is very important, especially if you have a window directly in front of you or directly behind you. A good way to combat this is by actually utilizing an iPad or any other tablet you might have. Most tablets that have come out in 2020 already have the capabilities to produce 4K video from their front-facing webcams. So for example, the iPad Pro 2020 edition that's just come out a couple of weeks ago features a seven megapixel front-facing camera that can showcase you in glorious 4K. So similar to what this video is being produced in, this is the absolute maximum quality that you'll be able to present to somebody else. Yes, you have to consider the limitations of the program you're using. For example, Zoom and Skype only let you stream in 1080p, so there isn't a point in having a 4K video camera, it's just downscaled, but the software advantages the audio quality, the screen size, and everything in between makes it the perfect streaming device. Okay, so now let's say that you don't have access to a laptop or a desktop with a webcam, and your smartphone's camera is absolutely busted, you've dropped on the floor, cracked the screen, whatever. You have to go out and buy a webcam. Now I say it that way because, in my personal opinion, I don't believe you need to go out and buy a webcam unless you absolutely need it. Especially considering the ones that will do even a half decent job and give you some decent quality images, cost a little bit of money. So the first recommendation I'm gonna make of a webcam, I'm actually gonna read because Logitech doesn't have fancy names, they have lots of numbers and letters to make it different from their last one. So the Logitech C922 Pro Stream is one of the best, if not the best webcams at a reasonable price on the market today. So for 140 Australian dollars, you can pick up this Logitech webcam that streams in 1080p. Not only does it have good image quality that's great in daylight and in low light, it also features two microphones on each side to really capture the audio at the best possible quality. So a web camera like this is one of the best investments you can make if you do not have the accessibility or options of any other webcam available on any other device. My next webcam suggestion is for those working in more low light conditions and again, require some good audio at the same time. The Razer Kiyu, I hope I pronounced that correctly, features its own inbuilt ring light. So the same feature that's here in front of me now, lighting this whole background and scene is actually inbuilt into your webcam. So you're gonna be able to present yourself in an optimal light. The downside to this Razer webcam is the fact that it costs 220 Australian dollars. So it is definitely one of the more premium webcams out there, especially for home use, but it is targeted more at the gaming community and the streaming community themselves. And last but not least is the Microsoft LifeCam HD 3000. I don't know why all these webcams have terrible name, but they just do. So the Microsoft webcam is one of the cheapest webcams you can buy. It's 48 Australian dollars from most retailers and is basically just the cheapest webcam you can buy. It streams in 720p, which isn't any better than any laptop out there on the market at the moment. And it doesn't have any amazing audio quality or any amazing video features. It literally just gets the job done. So if you do need something to just get the job done, this is the webcam I would recommend for you. Now there is one other more techie solution that you might not be aware of. If you already own a smartphone and you're well aware of the fact that the rear facing camera is a much higher quality than any front facing camera on any smartphone, well, you can actually use your smartphone and plug it into your laptop and utilize it as the webcam. You can also do this with a DSLR. So if you have a big proper professional camera, you can again step up your video quality to a whole nother level. This means you do not have to go out and buy a webcam to utilize something if you wanna use your laptop, for example, to stream 
and have video calls and video conferences with other people. There are a million and one YouTube tutorials out there of how to connect your smartphone or your DSLR to your laptop. So just give that a quick search or send me a DM and I'll let you know how you can do it for your device. So what's the conclusion here? What should you be using to stream your video calls and your video conferences on? Well, personally, my suggestion would be if you don't have anything accessible to you, use whatever you have because at the end of the day, it is really about getting in front of these people and being able to connect when we're in a time that we can't be connected. If you do have a few options though, the best thing to use is your smartphone. Your smartphone produces the highest quality video that you can get out of any of these devices. Having a 4K video capabilities from the front facing camera off a high end flagship will definitely produce some of the best, if not the best video that anybody has on FaceTime, Zoom or Skype, or whatever app you're using. My only suggestion with a phone is make sure you go out and grab a small tripod, place it horizontally and make sure that you're using it properly. Plug some headphones in to get the best audio quality that you can get and you're good to go. If you don't want to use a smartphone and you do want to use a laptop or a webcam or an iPad, out of all these three, I would definitely suggest going out and using an iPad. Using your iPad will again get you much higher quality video than any laptop webcam or any built-in laptop webcam, I should say, that's out there right now. So as a generic blanket statement, your iPad, a new iPad at least, is gonna be better than any old laptop you have out. With all of these, I would always recommend headphones though, just for the best audio experience for yourself and for the other people engaged in the video call. And lastly, on my list of suggestions is a webcam. I personally don't believe you need to go out and purchase a webcam unless your computer doesn't have one and you absolutely need one. There is no real benefit to a webcam versus a smartphone or iPad or a laptop. So use whatever you have to your advantage and only go out and buy a webcam if you need it. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some great information out of it. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2020 style. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.